Hi, so we're going to have a think about how our bodies respond to changes in the environment. And there's two systems that are involved with doing that. We've got the nervous system, which is made of the brain, spinal cord and nerves. And we've got the hormone or endocrine system, which is made up of um, a load of glands which produce hormones. And hormones are chemical messengers which travel around in the blood. So the endocrine system is involved with um, carrying messages around in a much slower way, a much more long-lasting way, and the nervous system is all about responding quickly to change. Um, and what we're going to be looking at in this topic, homeostasis, is lots of different things that our bodies need to be able to respond to. Um, and how our bodies do that, lots of different examples, some coordinated by the nervous system, some coordinated by the endocrine system. And in today's lesson, it's just about seeing the overview of how these two systems work and introducing you to some of the terminology. So any change in the environment has this um, scientific name, a stimulus. And the easiest way to, I think, to remember um, some of the different stimuli that our bodies need to respond to is to think about our five senses. So we've got smell, which detects chemicals, um, and the, there are cells in your nose that can then detect those chemicals. We've got sight, which looks at changes in light, and the cells in your retina in the back of your eye that can pick up those changes in light. We've got touch, which looks at two different things, both pressure, and if you think about, if you just touch your fingers like this, um, what you're, you can feel something, and what you're actually feeling is pressure, um, and your skin detects that. Your skin is also a very good detector of changes in temperature, and it can tell you if it's very hot or very cold. Then we've got our hearing, um, and our ears, with cells in our ears, um, that are highly specialised to be able to detect those vibrations um, that make up sound. And then finally, we've got taste, which is also detecting chemicals. So all of these different things are all changes in the environment, and they're all picked up by specialist cells um, found in sense organs. And those um, specialist cells are called receptors. Okay, so we've got our stimulus. We've just gone through five of those and those um, that change is detected by these things called receptors um, and those receptors are essentially responsible for noticing the change in the environment. They've then got to transmit this information um, to a coordination center. This is usually but not always the brain um, and the coordination center is going to decide what to do um, with that information and it then um, sends that information to an effector and the effector is the part of your body which is going to respond or make a response um, to this information so that all just is a bit wordy at the moment just to kind of give you an example here this person here is standing on a drawing pin so the stimulus would be the pressure in the bottom of the foot of the drawing pin the receptors would be in the skin in the bottom of your foot that information then goes to a coordination, coordination centre, in this case, your central nervous system, your brain and your spinal cord. Um, and that is going to um, coordinate the response, which is done by the muscles in your leg, which are going to um, move, um, con the muscles are going to contract to make your foot move away from the drawing pin. And that would be the response. The response is the movement. The effectors is the muscle. So this is just one example, um, and we, like I said, we're going to look at lots of different examples. So today's lesson isn't necessarily about learning examples, but it's about getting you to learn this um, little flowchart here. So stimulus detected by receptors, that information goes to a coordination centre, which goes to effectors, which do, an, do a response. And different, different um, stimuli will cause different responses, and they'll have different receptors, different coordination centers, and different effectors. Um, and in the next little video, um, I'm going to show you just a couple more examples of that to help you to get your head around this.